Welcome to Dice Camera Action. And for this week, uh, we've got guest star Sam Sykes rejoining us. For now. Hey, yeah. Sam. Uh, yeah. So Yay. Let's, let's make this a really good 10 minutes. <laughs> Previously in Dice Camera Action, a dark elf named Kozen Zorlaren convinced the Waffle Crew to descend into the Xanathar's lair to kidnap the Beholder's pet fish in a daring maneuver to keep the Beholder at bay, um, to control the Beholder's mounting aggressions against them. When they got down there, they quickly triggered the alarm, um, but not before Paulton overheard the Xanathar having a conversation with some members of the Zentarim, uh, trying to smooth that road over before turning all of his remaining ten eyes on vengeance against the Waffle Crew. Vengeance deserved, at least in the Xanathar's mind, because uh, the Waffle Crew and their companion Binwin Bronzebottom took out the Xanathar's central eye. The eye that he most loved to look at his fish through. So, here we are now in the Xanathar's lair. Evelyn and Kozen are side by side confronting the Xanathar and his troops which include a dwarf who thinks he's a minotaur and several bugbears. Uh, and Evelyn has uh, made an attempt to, um, shall we say, quell the Beholder's anger as much as possible, while her three intrepid friends head off into the depths of the Xanathar's lair to find the fish, which Diath and Paulton have done. The fish is contained in a 20-foot diameter water-filled tank a round tank, uh, in the middle of a large room. And we pick up now in initiative order. Starting with... The rest of the Beholder eye beams? Dia. Wait, no. Damn. Oh, oh, damn. Uh, okay. So, Dia, if you're uh, looking into a large, spacious room with this giant fish tank, a smaller fish tank on a, on a table next to it, and swimming in the giant tank amid coral reefs and a, a miniature of a, a sunken galleon is the gold-scaled, red-tinged fish. Right. And I just take a moment to take in this room, but then look back at that sweet trap door that I found. Yes, in the room behind that'll you. Never, that'll just never get to go through. Yeah. And then I'll go back to the task at hand. And Paulton is uh, with you. So, what, how tall is this, uh, the aquarium and the fishbowl itself? Because I'm imagining, yeah. like... So the fishbowl is 20, like 20 feet in diameter. Okay. So it's, it's massive. Right. And uh, it's about 16 feet high and bowl shaped. Okay, so not tippable. <laughs> I mean, there goes plan A. <laughs> now it's situated about five feet from the nearest wall. Okay. So it's not dead center in the middle of the room. Uh, but yeah, that's a, that's a ton of water. Okay. Uh, is there nearby step ladders or stools or something that looks like they probably used to put the feed in or just a way to reach the top, basically? Yeah, you can, uh, as you poke around the room, uh, you can see it's kind of oddly shaped and there are corners and things that you can look behind. There is, in fact, a step ladder uh, tucked in a corner behind, just out of, out of view from the door you came through, but as you make your way into the room, you can see it sort of behind the fish tank. And okay. it's about... Um, it looks like it, it's about 20 feet high. Oh, gosh. It's so tall. I believe in you. What? <laughs> you, got, you, got, you got the climbs. You got the hops, man. You got this. As you, uh, as you look in the room, too, you can see that not too far from there, uh, from the, on one wall is what appears to be a giant mirror made out of sort of reflective steel. And, I'm sure that's fine. And yeah, it's probably fine. You also notice as you make your way into the room that the wall opposite the mirror and the stepladder has a hole in it, uh, bored through it at a height of about 10 feet off the ground. It looks like a beholder passage. It's kind of tube-shaped. Mm. And it leads away from the room. 
Okay, so then... Wait, so he gets around his lair just through, like, hamster tubes? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> Halton sees that, he's just like, I wonder where that goes. <laughs> so then the smaller bowl that they place him into for feeding, yeah. what's, what's, what's that one like? So that's, that, more like like a, that's more like a... That's, that's carryable. It's about, like, a f- two feet across. You could get your arms around it. Okay. And carry okay. it. So if the fish is in there, we can't carry the bull itself. Yes. It would it would be awkward, but right. that's it. Cumbersome, but yes. doable. Okay. Good word. Okay. Um well, you just well, two feet around. Yeah. It's a big ass bull. Yeah. yeah. It is. It's, yeah. it's a it's a big fish. It's, it's not a like a fish. goldfish. It's like a trout. Right. It's a carp oh. si- it's a carp sized goldfish, basically. Yeah. That changes a lot. Yeah. So uh, Dieth will turn to Paulton and just say, uh, we'll have to do this quickly, quietly, and cleanly. Right. What do you got? <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, you said that. It felt, like, it felt like you had a plan to follow that up with. Uh, I mean, <laughs> ideas, yes. Plan, get him in the bowl, get out. Mm, right. No, yeah, duh, that. Um, (laughs) How long can you hold your breath? Chris, how long can I hold my breath? Constitution 10. Maybe a minute. And then, are you trying to, are you you suggesting? uh, No, side uh, side question. How heavy are you? Oh, 135, 140 pounds. Okay. Starting to, uh, starting to, hmm, okay. I don't, okay, so I jump in there, I swim after it, grab the fish underwater, <coughs> swim out. <laughs> you think, you think the fish is open to ideas? By the way, uh, Jared, the answer yes. to your magic question is with a con 10, you can hold your breath for one minute. Yeah, yeah, about a minute. All right, uh, is the smaller bowl already filled with water? Yes. Okay. Great. All right, so. Okay, okay. I love how evident it is that you guys have never <laughs> tried to catch a fish before. <laughs> I don't have it. I don't have it. <laughs> Not with our hands. <laughs> so after Diaz and Polkner are standing there in front of this big tank, and they're like, so, so. Yeah. I'll just hold you by your ankles. You grab it, and I'll pull you out. That's a terrible idea. Well, it's an idea. <laughs> <laughs> At the moment, it's our best one. Uh, do you have any kind of food or anything on you? Do you think a, a large goldfish would want to snatch up? You think it likes wine? No, no, I don't think so. What if we just dump wine into the water? What that do you would think kill would it. That oh, would kill it. Get, if you get the fish drunk, he might be more amenable, is yeah. what Posen would say if he were there. And so, not- yeah, well, if the fish is drunk, that, for for what it's worth, at least it'd be funny. Oh, boy. All right. Here I go. Uh, Dieth will take out uh, his rope <laughs> from, from his pack. Okay. <laughs> and one end of it to Paulton. Okay. <laughs> and just say, all right, after I got that on him, you, mm-hmm. you pull him out. Got, got it? Um, <laughs> you don't have like a hook or something? No. No, I don't. So you just want to lasso this thing out? Yep. Dieth picks up the other end. I'm getting in there. I'm going to tie it around him, and then you bait him out. I don't see what could go wrong with this. Let's do it. <laughs> Dieth will start, like, okay. going up the step ladder and getting into position to, like, okay. get, find some way to get into the bowl. And as he's doing it's like, well, if you got a better idea, you let me know. We don't have a lot of time. Okay, so DF pulls the ladder over. Um, next to the fishbowl, starts climbing up it with the rope. Uh, as he does, Paulton, make a perception check. Oh, good. This is such a stupid idea. Oh, good. Uh, uh. 
<laughs> 12. Okay. Cool. Um, I assume you're not doing anything like to steady the ladder. You're just going to let him take care of that. <laughs> I mean, if we're in an initiative order, I don't know what I can do. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, what would you do, given, okay. given, given everything that you know so far? Um, actually, no, you're right. I would just watch. Okay. <laughs> and as you're, as you're kind of looking around, um, confident that DF can manage the ladder on his own, you uh, notice kind of peering out of, through the doorway of a side chamber a stout figure, possibly a dwarf, but you see tentacles coming out of his head. Like eye stalks, like um, beholder eye stalks. Hmm. Um, and he's just watching. It's watching us? Yeah. There was some sort of scraping as the ladder got moved into position and whatnot, that may, or your talking may have attracted his attention. Could I say something to him? Absolutely. Just like, Hey, just uh, tank cleaners coming in, routine, getting a little <laughs> algae build up in here. We just want to make sure this, uh, this thing's in good health. Okay. Dieth hears this, looks over at Paulton, and then looks over where yeah. Paulton is talking at, and then just like freezes in place, just. Uh, make a deception check, Paulton. Okay, good. Okay, that is a 23. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then the figure withdraws. As you, I'm just like, no. Oh. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> All right, uh, I start climbing my way up to the top of that bowl. Okay, you get to the top of the bowl. Strix, you are a couple. Thank God. You are a couple areas back, um, yeah. in rat form, uh -huh. navigating your way down a curved passage that's supported you... every ten feet or so by stone pillars. Of course. And these stone pillars have uh, the uh, Paulton's fairy fire okay. cast on them. Um, I'm just trying to find them, so can I listen, perhaps, to sure. see if I can hear them? Sure thing. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can hear where they're coming from because I, I have a feeling that they're not being stealthy at all. Uh, that's a 17. Um, I take offense to that. <laughs> well, I mean, Dieth <laughs> is, but Paulton is not. Uh, with your 17, you can hear distantly their voices. Okay. Um, and they seem to lead you to uh, a doorway. Uh, the door is open and there's light spilling out. And okay. as you creep to the edge of that doorway uh, using all of your movement in rat form, you can see an empty chamber that looks almost like an audience chamber. Uh, I'm ratting. And it's circular and tall. Okay. With two other doors leading off of it, one of which is closed and one of which is open. And the open one is where their voices are coming from. So there's kind of one room between you and them, and it's this big empty audience chamber. Okay, I would like to walk along the wall as a rat would. Okay. And uh, hug the wall towards to where I hear their voices. Yeah. All right. I'm ratting. Okay. As you make your way along the wall, the door that is closed across from you opens. Oh, balls. And uh, two figure and this this and this room you're in is lit. Oh, so cool. uh, you're not hidden in darkness as you creep uh -huh. across the wall. Coming through the room, crossing it, uh, literally almost heading right for you, but really more properly heading for the door you just came through. Mm -hmm. Are two creatures one is a dwarf with goggles um, strapped to his head, but not over his eyes. And he's got red hair and a red beard that's sort of braided twice to create sort of this bifurcated beard, this, okay. for, this beard, fork-shaped beard. Um, he has an apron and uh, leather clothing, and in his apron are all kinds of tools, and he's carrying a really, really big wrench that he just sort of occasionally gets dragged or knocked against the floor as he walks. Mm -hmm. And he's just making his way across. Floating a, about a foot or so behind him is a small spherical creature about the size of a grapefruit. Mm -hmm. And you've seen this kind of creature before. It is like a mini beholder. It's got four little eye stalks with pink eyes that are sort of looking all around it as it floats behind 
the dwarf. And the odd thing about this one, unlike the other small beholder kins you've seen, is it's stark white. It's an albino oh. beholder kin. I mean, I think that's cool for like half a second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just like, shit. <laughs> um, uh, but make a stealth check. I was going to say, I just freeze and get as close to the wall as I can. Okay. And curse and rat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not bad. It was 16. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah. The dwarf is too wrapped in his own murmurings and thoughts to pay you any mind, and if, even if he did, he wouldn't really suspect a rat. This place would be infested with them. But the beholder is a little bit more wary and uh, looks around, and the two of them go right past you. Oh. I let out a ratty sigh. I go, <sighs> and you continue on. Okay. Okay. Uh, distraction force, charisma edition. <laughs> yeah, for all the <laughs> fucking good that's done. Uh, you guys are in the entry foyer, with the Xanathar facing you on one side of the foyer, and the horde of the the Minotaur dwarf guy and the and the goblinoids. Uh, behind you in the direction your friends went. And the Xanathar, uh, well, first of all, um, we're not technically an initiative. We're just having a conversation here. So, um, Evelyn. Oh, it hurts. <laughs> Ow. Uh, Evelyn, uh, uh, you saw Kozen take the brunt of a laser, basically. Why uh, are you hurting all of us? It's so mean. I thought you were my friend. Let's have a long discussion about it. <laughs> <laughs> to which the beholder says, Where are your friends? I know they're here. You're my friend. <laughs> Be that as it may. What other friend? Strix. Palton. And the one I've come to know now is Dieth. Damn it. Uh, well, <coughs> I mean, as much as I could, like, check my locator watch for all the... I don't really just, like, keep tabs on people. I mean, don't you have people to do that? Uh, you can see him grimace and kind of bare his teeth. And... Uh, he says... Of course I do. I have dozens, hundreds. Are you sure? Could I see them? Uh, he blinks intently and says... I mean, a lot of people say they have tons of people, you know. A lot of people are like, oh, my people will call your people, you know. But, like, who actually has people? Like, I'd love to meet your people, you know. Oh, I get it. This is distraction force. What? I should have known. Damn it. How do you know about... I mean, <laughs> told, <the> <laughs> told him about distraction force. And uh, he says, Cozen, find them. Yeah, absolutely. I... Ow, I need medical attention. <laughs> I am out. <coughs> so do you leave? Yeah, I leave while his before anyone can zap Cool, me. man. Thanks. Okay. He's... It's fine. This is where Charisma Edition kicks in. All right. Uh, so, um, uh, Evelyn, Kozen leaves your side. Um, you can... Uh, and then the Xanathar says, Amerigo, go with him. <coughs> Evelyn changes tactics and she kind of stops with the song and dance, but then she got hit like in the stomach, right? Yeah, try basically intercepting the beam that was intended for the Strix rat. So she just goes quiet and like kind of like pulls aside like the ripped and burned clothing and like just shows the wound, which I it, I imagine is substantial. It was like a 54 HP wound. Yeah. And so she just kind of like sadly looks at it and looks dejected and like in pain. Like she's going for the pity now. Oh, okay. Uh, like, you know, she was trying to just act it all out, but now everything is 
everything is revealed and he just really hurt her, you know? Uh, he says, um, kind of uh, with very, very little real empathy, um, not being a creature of empathy, he says, you think that's bad? Look at my eye. Well, let me see. What eye? <laughs> Uh, and uh, he says, don't touch it, it hurts. I won't. And she like gets up real close and then she just pats him on the top of the beholder head. It's like, you poor thing. <laughs> Can I roll a performance check for that? Absolutely. Oh man, one. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I ask? <laughs> and uh, so I, I imagine that it was supposed to be like, "Oh, you poor thing," but it came off as "you poor thing." <laughs> <laughs> or just when you went to when you went to touch him, it's like your hand touched him, you just went. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of gagged. Like ew. And he says, "I think I liked you better as a statue." That is very rude. I think I didn't like you. <laughs> Can I try to stab him since I'm up close to him? Uh, oh my god! Let's roll initiative because you're both thinking the same thing. You're both betraying each other at the same moment. <laughs> oh my god! No. <laughs> oh no! My no, we weren't so supposed bad. to fight him! <laughs> it's ten. Okay. Uh, so uh, he rolled a seven. Which means you get your first attack or your attacks oh, first. Oh, fucking make it count! I want to just I want to go straight through the empty eye socket with my flame sword. Oh. Okay. Ooh. This is a horrific image. Go ahead and make your attacks. Can you guys bless bless my die, the die that Holly gave me? Oh, please? look at that. Okay, thank I, you. Wait, is this our blessing? <laughs> bless. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, dice. Dice. Oh, you guys didn't bless it very hard. What? I, ro I rolled a seven, which means I got a fifteen. Uh, that's as hard as we can bless it. I don't know yeah. if you right. met us. Um, the that does not hurt the beholder. Okay, well, second attack. Yeah. I guess the 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 fluff is that she tried to stab him, yeah. but she was too close that time, so it kind of like she couldn't get a good. So she's gonna take a step back and try one more time, two handed, just. Boom. Okay. I'm gonna use, actually, I'm going to finally use this magical blessed die that Mustang's art sent me that she said was blessed. I've never rolled it before. This is an important roll. Oh, God. Here if she's go. watching right now, please don't crush her heart. Ah, there we go. All right, that's a 24. That oh, hits? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mustang's art. Don't roll, don't roll any damage. dice that any of us have given you. <laughs> All right, so that is going to be... Oh, and I'm going to use Divine Smite as well, obviously. Obviously. So, um, okay, so, uh, 21 plus, uh, uh, is he a fiend? He is not. He is an aberration. Okay. Uh, Some would say he has a fiendish personality. Oh. Mm. I think he's more of a douchey personality. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to pull okay, some of that Patrick so Rothfuss bullshit. <laughs> I did um, Divine Smite at second level and did 40 damage. 40? 40. Wow. Okay. Uh, he howls in pain, at which point, Kozen, you're out in the hallway with Amergo. Amergo stops, looks back, and says, Amergo, go check on that. Yeah. And cool, he, he leaves you and returns to Xanathar. Well. Leaving yeah. you by yourself. Look who's still around. <laughs> uh, <laughs> where do you go, Kozen, once you're in this curved hallway with pillars by yourself? Because you know uh, that, that this hallway curls around to the Xanathar's audience chamber and to where the fish is. You right. also know that there is a secret door to your right that goes into some sort of other magical area. All right, well, huh. I don't know whether I want to leave them to die or mm. to hasten them along. 
but I'm still here to kill Gnarl. Right. So I figure I at least not need need to make a, a go at it. So mm-hmm. having assumed that they are at least on their way to the fish, yeah. I will start heading towards the fish to okay. tell them about this latest uh, business. Okay. Uh, then you're able to, because you're a very speedy guy, get all the way to the circular audience chamber. And Strix, you can see Kozen coming into the doorway behind you. Well, actually, uh, Kozen, when you get up to the door, you can hear the sound of metal tapping against stone, like something being dragged across the floor. And okay. with your dark vision, you can actually see, moving away from you and oblivious to your presence, is a dwarf with a small... Beholder floating next to him. Uh, <clears throat> he looks like some sort of engineer. All right, and he's he's currently not paying attention. He to is me. not paying attention to you at all. All right, I'm gonna stick with the plan. Okay. Uh, keep keep on moving on. Uh, if I see um, Kozen, yeah, you do. Uh, I well, I don't trust Kozen. Never mind. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Change you my made life. me a pie. It's true, but I mean, she doesn't necessarily trust everyone she makes pies for, but she'll still care give for them. That was a special pie. All right, the Xanathar uh, will look at you, Evelyn, and uh, first uh, target you with a ray. I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. My, My emoji shield has very angry eyes. Okay. Uh... Your aura works on yourself, right? Huh? Your protection aura, or whatever you got for that paladin stuff, does that work on yourself? Oh yeah. Versus saving throw. I think it does. Let me double check. Uh, when you or a friendly creature, yep. Thank you for the reminder, Jared. I just don't want you to die. Yeah, I rolled really poorly too. Why am I rolling these dice? Don't die! Don't die! Uh, let's see. So con. I have really high con though. So no, it's well, wisdom. 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 Yeah. Poop. Uh, seven plus five is. 12 is not enough, uh, oh. and he hits you with a sleep ray, so you uh-huh. fall asleep. Uh-huh. Great. Uh-huh. And, Naps! And flutter, Naps ge- flutter gently down to the floor. Um, uh, that's nice. <laughs> like a little Disney princess. Yup. And... Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. Now make a dexterity. Sa- no, no. Well, you <laughs> make a dexterity saving throw, but uh, because you are currently unconscious, um, your dexterity saving throw. Ooh. Oh, he's just gonna yeet you into a wall. Yeet. <laughs> yeet. <laughs> unconscious. Blah blah blah. Drop it holding automatically fails strength and dexterity saving throws. Okay. Cool. Um, fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so nobody knows what happens to Evelyn because she's by herself now. Cool. So let us briefly go cool. back to Paulton and Diath. Wacky cool. hijinks. Oh yeah. boy. Diath, you're standing at the top of the ladder looking in the tank. You can see that the fish is deking in and out among the sunken wreck and the coral reefs uh, in the lower third of the tank. Right. Make a perception check. Uh, okay. Do I as well? Oops. Yeah, you see that as well. Absolutely. Uh, 22. Okay. Very good. Um, you also see that there, for the first time now, from uh, vantage point DF, is there is a treasure chest at the bottom of this big tank. Designed yeah. to sort of, You're just designed to, to kill sort of, him. Designed to Don't sort of look. look like a lost pirate. Do, do I see chest. it? Uh, not, not from the floor, no. It's kind of tucked away. Is that her face? Uh-huh. <laughs> Swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> Leave you in the crowd. Yeah. Diath, you're the first act of the two of you, so what would you like okay. to do? Uh, okay, I guess I'm diving into that fish bowl, <laughs> fishing after, swimming after this fish in hopes I can somehow <laughs> wrangle it up in my rope right. underwater. When you, Are we, okay. yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Are we like, uh, could I do some, are we not in initiative over here or? Technically not. So yeah, you can do something simultaneously. Do I know what it would eat? 
Um, y yeah. Was I told? You'd know that it would eat fish food, basically. Um, either... Could I minor illusion and create fake fish food at the top of the at the top of the tank? You could, yeah. Cool. Do you want that? I, just, I was just asking if I could. I don't, no, I, yes, <laughs> I want to. <laughs> All right. So you're creating fish food at the top of the tank. Diath, you're in the tank, oh. uh, swimming around, and uh, everything looks distorted outside of the tank, of course. If I had, if, had I noticed that Paulton made this fake fish food? Mm, no. Fuck. Great. All right. There's fish food. <clears throat> then Diath comically <clears throat> swims around in this fish bowl after a... Large goldfish. Okay. Um, Diath, make a... Oh, boy. Strength athletics check. Does the fish food help? <clears throat> to grapple the fish. Uh, the fish doesn't seem to be paying any attention to the fish food. I figured this would be the case. Oh, well, that's not bad. 16. Okay. Uh, you swim after it, and... Uh, uh, it's going to make a dexterity acrobatics check to try to slip through your grasp, and it, oh, no. it fails, and you grab it. And it's just like the gift that Holly posted, where it's just... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do I see he grabbed it? Yeah, he, he went down there, and it tried to swim away, and just like... He just... Okay, am I able to tie it with the rope? Just throw it out! <laughs> what? Just throw it out of the... T it can't hear me. Damn it. <laughs> you just see Paulson just like waving outside. <laughs> I, I like try and motion. I'm just like, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. Would I, would I be able to swim while also, also holding a fish? You can, you know, kick your feet and you don't need to have your arms necessarily free to surface for sure. Oh, okay. Uh, like, yeah, I can at least do it's that. A lot of, that's a lot easier. You're, you got your gloved hands around the fish. You don't think yeah. it would be a simple task to larry up the fish with a rope. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, I'll start start kicking away and get back to the uh, surface with the with the fish. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> All right. Uh, Paulton, do you want to do anything as he's swimming back to the top with the fish? You're currently concentrating on your spell, I believe. No, I'm good here. All right. Then, Diath, you break the surface. You've still got the fish in your <laughs> in your two hands. And yeah. what do you do next? And then... Uh, Throw it into the bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Just eat it. <laughs> Where's the bowl in relation to me? And so, can I throw a fish into it? So, yeah, there's a smaller bowl <laughs> below you next to this big tank. You can see it. It's like it's like ba it's like playing basketball. It's like a hoop. Like you, you know, it's a good shot to try to get it in there. Wait, can I can I like pick it up and like try to like catch it where he throws it? <laughs> yes. I'm just Please. all right. I got this. We got this. Uh, yeah, if Paulton's holding that up and can move it so you can catch it. I'll, okay. I'll catch it. Don't worry. From the surface, rub swimming. I'm just gonna. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> All right. I need, so that Paul... I need to see it. <laughs> so that Paulton catches it. <laughs> the fish goes flying out of your hands, out of the mm -hmm. tank, and Paulton, uh, make a <laughs> dexterity saving throw. Dexterity? Yeah. Cool. We're heroes! <laughs> uh, 17. All right, you catch it in the tank. <laughs> <laughs> it lands, I'm just like, it worked. Make a strength saving throw. Oh. oh. Uh, 16. Okay. It sort of slips a little bit <laughs> like through your grasp, but you catch it on your thighs, basically. And you it manage worked. to keep the, uh, the bowl from smashing on the floor. Oh, my God. We did it. Wow. Well, have I, have I, I arrived in the room at this point? So Strix has arrived. Around peek, peeks her little rat head around the corner of the room and sees Paulton sort of stumbling on the floor a little bit with this big tank and a fish, oh a fish roiling around inside of it. All right, I'm gonna undo my polymorph. So back to Strix. <laughs> You're Strix. Um, and I just look at, I look at them and I say, "Hold on, it's time to go." We did it. 
But and we can, I, can I cast my word of recall? Uh, yes, you can. Cozen, you come up uh, upon Strix at this time as she turns back into her normal form and says those merry words. When right. when Strix shows up, Dieth immediately asks, where's Evelyn? Well, we have to go get Evelyn, maybe. I think, I don't know, does it work? Can she just come too? Do, do you have to touch her or something? How's, I don't know how the spell works. You and up to five willing creatures within five feet of you. Oh, so we have to go get her. teleport. Okay. Okay, well, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, I just, like, disappear. I go invisible. Wait, no! No, you have to... We'll all go get her. Well, you're holding the fish. Give At least give me the fish. I'm going to polymorph the fish, then. Give me the fish. Well, what, wouldn't give me the, the fish go invisible, too? Can you yeah, polymorph into a smaller, too. more manageable fish? Yeah, it's it's yes. all it's all in... Oh, oh that's a great I'm... idea. <laughs> but the, it doesn't make the bowl smaller. No, but it doesn't matter. I'll put them in, like, a, I have potion bottles. I'll just put a tiny little fish in the potion bottle and cork it up. So you're, so you're polymorph the fish into a smaller, more manageable fish? Yes. So what about something saying... that can just breathe air and go in a bag? <laughs> okay, okay, I'm sorry, okay. Like an I'll owl polymorph bear. it into something that can breathe air and go into a bag, okay. Oh. But... So I, I feel like I should interject here. Like, I can hear them all discussing oh, yeah. this brilliant plan, right? Yeah. It's so Cozen that... in here? Yeah. Cozen! I turn to Cozen, I'm just like, the fuck is that? <laughs> I, as, as they turn to the subject of Evelyn, I come in and say, yeah, about that. Um, she might be dead. Excuse me? Possibly. Yeah. I, like I can fix that. Though, uh, I calmly set the bowl down. Mm -hmm. Ugh. I don't so, drop it. I wasn't there to see what happened, but as soon as I left, there was the sound of a fight. I heard screaming, uh, smiting, mm -hmm. and yeah, things don't seem to be going that well. That's okay. We'll go get her. Also, yeah. I'm going to turn the fish into a snail. But, but, now hear me out. Uh, you currently have the beholder's fish, so you hold the upper hand. But if you polymorph it into something else... The fish succeeded on its saving throw. Oh, wow. Damn. <laughs> they rolled a natural. Well, good, because like if you, <laughs> if you polymorph it into not a fish, then the Xanathar won't believe you when you say you have his fish. Well, now I think that I don't have magic because the fish <laughs> resisted my magic, so I'm extremely upset. <laughs> I'm just looking at my hands like, D what's happening? <laughs> um... I'm going to, let me see something. Why don't, okay. Why don't we tie up the fish like a hostage what? in the bowl and it's in a like bowl. put, a, it is a, put a little gag on his little fish mouth and say, if you, you don't give us Evelyn back, the fish gets it. This I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to cast locate creature to see if I sense Evelyn, if I may. Okay. Strix is fashioning a fish gag out of a piece of robe. We're not gagging the fish. Yeah. Uh, no. It's within a thousand feet of you, so that's a good distance. That'll cover probably the entirety of the Xanathar's lair. You do not detect Evelyn. Hmm. What? Well, that's person, not creature. It's a uh, name of creature that is familiar to you. A person's not a creature. Yeah, it is. Oh. Locate creature would normally detect Evelyn if she's in the Xanathar's lair. Um, well, I was really hoping that that wasn't the case, so... Paul's okay. just... God damn it. Can you... Dieth get herself out of the fishbowl, please? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you pull out and you just sort of slide off the... <laughs> <laughs> Just that sound of like skin against gra glass. <laughs> we just all plug our ears, like. <laughs> and of course, you're soaked. You're just like. <laughs> oh yeah, just I'm like, like it's like floppy uh, hair yeah. completely down. Just like. <laughs> Strix will Strix will press to digitation. You clean and dry. Oh, Paulton's already running back. Yeah, you're clean and dry now. Paulton is leaving. Paulton is leaving the scene. Paulton, he's wait. Bolted. Nope, he's gone. Okay, he bolts past you the way he came. Evelyn's in trouble. Hopefully. We have to go. Well, that seemed like, I mean, I get sure. <laughs> we gotta. Uh, that was a little brash, but yes. Did uh, Colton take the fish? No. No, he put it down. Is... No, put the fish down. Fish is uh. still with them. Yeah. Well, um. So Paulton's gone, but the fish is still here. We have to take the fish. I'm going to. <sighs> I'm going to polymorph the fish into a snail. Wait. A try. Wait, what? I like Cozen's idea. 
Yeah, so I, long as long as we can show this, he won't attack us or harm us, not without putting the fish okay, in harm's okay. way. Okay, fine. And if something's wrong with Evelyn, then that's our final bargaining chip. All right, you and I will carry the fish then. Yes. <sighs> as fast as we can. And Cozen, you can help us by staying stealthy and being a drow. You got it. You got it. How's that? That sounds brilliant. Was that a plan? Did I just make a plan? Amazing. <laughs> Chris, am I there yet? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, since you're going uh, pell-mell uh, back. Uh, so when you get back to the hallway with the pillars, you see that it's completely dark again because your fairy fire has expired. But you kind of know the way you're going. Mm-hmm. Um, you've, been, you've been down this hallway before. So you can run through it in the dark. And... Um, As you do, let's see. I'm still invisible, yeah? Uh, you are still invisible, yes. Cool. Um, so you see at the end of the hall a group of creatures coming in your direction. Uh, from the opposite direction. Uh, and the only reason you can see them is because uh, one of them is carrying uh, a lantern and he's a figure, he's, he's a human. Um, okay. And so he's sort of, he is lighting himself and two of his companions, who are also both humans. They are accompanied by the Xanathar, mm-hmm. who is using an eye ray to levitate Evelyn, who is a statue. And she's a statue of herself sleeping. Cool. Uh, I'm and, just good. Oh, uh, go you ahead. can see that there are uh, a number of goblins, bugbears, and also that dwarf with the horned helmet present. Cool. So, as invisible, yep. and I see statue Evelyn, mm-hmm. I want to walk right up to the Xanathar. Okay. If I can, can I get to him? Uh, yeah, he's just sort of walking or is surrounded by his goblinoids and, and the dwarf and, and his guests, these Zentarum human agents. But you're invisible. Mm-hmm. You can easily get up to the Xanathar in your present invisible condition. Cool. Uh, so no logic. I'm running on pure rage right now. I just walk up to him, and I'm going to cast a level 6 underwave on him. Okay. <laughs> now can and we just- leave? I'm just gonna. I'm just like fuck this. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, are you tr- basically just trying to get him like kind of blasting upward, or are you gonna try to get as many of his minions as possible in the process? Um, whatever would be. I don't. I don't even know. Okay. So uh, probably so just the, blasting the it out from you then and. We'll say you'll get some X number of randos in the blast. Okay, yeah. roll your damage. Uh, what's the day? The save DC? Uh, Seventeen. All of you can hear the thunderclap of Paulton's spell. Ooh. Yep, time to go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. <laughs> the Xanathar, oh boy, rolled a <laughs> rolled a six <laughs> on his saving throw. Mm, cool. Uh, and I'm gonna say you're gonna catch three goblins, two bugbears, and all of the Zentarum dudes in the blast. Cool. All right, so let's see. I'm going to write these down first and then add them. I feel like we all hear this and you just think Strix and Dia, they're just holding this fishbowl, running as fast as they can, going, nope, 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 with water oh, splashing everywhere. Bad, bad, bad. That's a good one. And uh, so, no, no, three, uh, thirty-four. Hello. Okay, added to the forty points of damage that the Xanathar has just taken from Evelyn. And uh, all right. So this goes off. You are now visible standing amid uh, these enemies, but uh, three, or sorry, two goblins go flying back and get hurled up against the back wall and just fall dead to the floor. 
Yeah. Can I also try and catch the statue if I see it falling? Oh, three. Well, we'll get to that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, God. Just saying. <laughs> Uh, three bugbears, uh, all, uh, they are not blasted back, but they take half damage each and are all wounded. And then the Zents, uh, two of them are blasted back and killed, and the third one holding the lantern, his, his lantern glass is all smashed out. The lights go out in the hall completely, leaving you in the dark. Uh, and... Then you hear the Xanathar fly back 10 feet, um, end over end. His <laughs> telekinesis ray shuts off, and Evelyn's statue falls to the floor. It is dark. You can't see. Do you want to try to break her fall? <laughs> yes. Okay. A great plan. Make a dexterity saving throw at disadvantage because you can't see her. <laughs> Don't let the statue kill you. <laughs> 14. Okay. Uh, you lunge and you mm -hmm. hear a smashing noise <laughs> on the floor and you find yourself uh, hurling onto a pile of debris. Oh no. Why he gotta run on emotions? And now I need everybody to roll initiative. Because all of Paulton's foes can see in the dark, except the, the Zentarum. So, Strix. Guys, I'm sorry I Star Lorded it. <laughs> Strix. Oh, God. I can see in the dark. Yes, you well, can. Well, hang on. Are we still in the hall? Uh, you oh, are. No. You're basically in the audience chamber. Okay. Uh, as they go ahead. <laughs> no, no. Hold on. Everybody roll initiative. Okay. The white text is evil and. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Tell him! <laughs> uh, I'm assuming I don't need to roll initiative. Not at the present time, no. Okay. Uh, Strix, what was your initiative? 18. 18. DF? Uh, 17. 17. Paulton? 18. 18. Cozen? 12. 12. <sighs> and the bad guys. Okay. So after the thunderous blast, uh, we'll start with you, Paulton. What would you like to do next after you've thrown yourself onto the rubble pile? So I can't see. Correct. I'm going to, I'm just gonna call out to the Xanathar. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell him, we have your fucking fish. Fix her, stand down, and it lives. All right. Um, make a... Mm -hmm. I like that you added swears. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, since you're basically trying to alter his course of action, make it intimidate. Mm. Okay. And I'll give you advantage because you mentioned the fish. And you are coming from the direction of the fish. Uh, 19. Okay. And, uh, all right. Do you want to do anything else besides that, like, move or anything? Or um, Would saying that have counted as my action, or? Uh, yes. Oh. Well, then, uh... Um, let's go ahead and just click a new tab right here. Um, uh, yeah, I'll move, uh, away. Okay. You can use your sun sword to see. You could activate an item. Well, that's not mm. an action. Never mind. Yeah. Oh, damn. I'm just going to kind of, if I can get a feel of where it might be safe or uh, away You can't from. get a feel of it. You're in the midst, surrounded by enemies, as far as you can tell. Okay, I'm just gonna lay low. Okay. Uh, Strix? You heard the blast. Yes. And then you, you probably heard Paulton just yell out what he just yelled out to the Xanathar, this ultimatum. Okay. What do you do? Well, we have to get, I'll just look at Dieth, so I guess we have to get the fish there. Yeah, Dieth doesn't even say anything. He just keeps moving in that direction. 
Okay. Well, we're holding the bowl together. Yeah. Because it's big. Mm -hmm. So we'll just go towards Paulton. My initiative, I think it's right after yours, so I'll just move yeah. with you. Yeah. yeah. So what's up with the fish? Last I heard, it saved against your spell. It did. Oh, it's still a fish. It's still fish and fishbowl okay. being carried by DF and Strix. Got it. So the two of you are managing this fishbowl, uh, and it's sort of sloshing back and forth. The fish looking startled as it's being uh, uh, brought forth. <coughs> uh, the two of you enter or leave the audience chamber, enter the dark hall. Strix, you can see in the dark. DF I can't. I polymorph my staff into the lantern, the green okay. lantern. <laughs> Your staff is now Perfect. a green lantern, casting its glow, baleful glow down the hall, where you see the Xanathar kind of lying, <laughs> lying on its back or side and just kind of like reorienting itself um, after getting <laughs> shredded by a spell. And then uh, some bugbears standing around a little in shock, uh, but, but bringing their weapons almost to bear down on Paulton, who is lying atop uh, the shattered remains of Evelyn. So I can tell it's Evelyn. You yeah yeah you can tell because there's like a there's like a little petrified <laughs> winged boot. Okay. Does that count? Do I know if that counts as a body? No. I don't know if it does or not. It's now a collection of objects. <sighs> so that would be that there is no body. Correct. It's a okay, collection well. of objects. Okay. Well. I'm going to ignore that knowledge. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, you also see that there's one human uh, standing there with the broken remains of a lantern that's gone out. Okay. And he, you've seen him before um, outside of ChairCon. You cornered him and let him go, but he's basically a Zentarum operative. Okay. Um, well, if she's a collection of objects, then. Yeah. Um, All right, well, we have the fish. I'm just gonna put my hands like on the fish bowl and just pretty much like ready a fireball. Okay. So like I want like to like look intimidating and like while I'm holding this fish bowl and just say, oh my God, Nate brought back alcohol. I'm just holding this <laughs> fish, while I'm holding this fish bowl, I'm just gonna like see, I because Paulton's obviously trying to intimidate him yeah. and just say, you know, he's right, we have your fish. If you don't tell us what, tell us, save our friend or, and leave us alone, I will boil it alive. I'm holding it like this. Okay, wow. Do you want me to in intimidate check? Uh, go ahead, sure. Okay. Oh. Can I have advantage because I'm holding the fish? Actually, yeah, I'm <laughs> gonna say no because you used your action to turn your staff into a lantern. Okay, okay, so I don't um, intimidate, right. okay. Yes, uh, but you're kind of working on the intimidation, the groundwork that Paulton has already put forth. Exactly, yeah, I see yeah. what he's doing and I'm trying to help. Absolutely. Uh, DF, mm -hmm. do, you want, do you want to take any action? At this point you've moved. Um, yeah, I guess I'll just follow up from Strix's negotiation. <clears throat> and, uh, Uh, yeah, I'll also just say that um, you will let us leave and you will never, ever do anything to us ever again. Not to us, not the children, not to anyone that is important to us. You will leave us alone. Then and only then will you get Silgar back. All right. Um... Cozen. Yeah. So when they take off running with the fish, yeah. I scream right behind you, and then I, I, jog, in, I jog in place. <laughs> so it sounds like I'm right behind you. Right. And then once they're gone, I fuck off. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. All right. Uh, presumably going to hunt around the lair for Gnarl. Oh, no. 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 Like I only have 11 HP left. I'm I'm getting the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> he's not even doing what he's supposed to do. Okay. Uh, so, which... wait. Do I do I know I know the way out? Yeah, the way do out I is know... the way out is through the Xanathar at the moment. Oh, well, fuck that. But but there are other there are other avenues. Um, there's the door that the 
uh, dwarf and his albino gazer came through. That door is open to you. There's also, out in the hall, um, other passages that branch off of that curved hall. You could explore any one of those. Do I have a vague idea of which one leads out towards maybe um, the Based on intelligence, well, I'm going to have you make an intelligence check. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give you advantage because okay. you were given intelligence about this place uh, okay. prior to you showing up. Uh, so roll twice and take the higher result. Add your intelligence mod. Uh, I got a 16. Great. Uh, you recollect that probably the best exit for you is through the arena. Now, yeah, there's, a, there's a door off of this curved hall that leads, down, uh, leads to a flight of stairs that lead down to the, the audience portion of a circular chamber that serves as an underground fight arena. Word, word. And out of that arena are other passages that lead out to a place called Skullport, an underground uh, haven, old pirate haven, uh, deep, deep below water deep. All right, well... Perfect, perfect for a drow such as you to lose yourself Yeah, in. yeah, no, I mean, this plan has gone to shit, and, you know, the fish thing was always a long shot, so, you know, I take a moment, okay. reflect on what I could have done differently, and then I start heading out that way. Okay. Uh, you slip down the stairs, closing the door behind you, leaving the waffle crew to their... <laughs> to their doom, you think. Thanks. <laughs> we'll see you next time, I guess. Uh, when you get to the arena, uh, it's a magically lit circular right. chamber with a thin layer of blood-soaked sand covering the floor and the stone. Uh, there are buttresses that support its 40-foot-high domed ceiling, and then right. there are these 10-foot-high stone bleachers that hug half of the room, these, this sort of hemisphere of bleachers. That's what you sort of come out onto, the top of those bleachers. Right. And there are two tunnels leading off of it. There's also a tunnel underneath you that you believe leads to like a prison detention area. Now, um, this room that you have entered uh, is not currently empty. Huh. Uh, there, there are two or three creatures in the room on the sandy floor below you. Okay. Uh, one appears to be a uh, halfling. Okay. Uh, dressed or, or sort of wearing a tabard with the symbol of the Xanathar kind of painted on it. Okay. And uh, you see that that halfling is wearing a hood to hide her face and just has eyes peering out through eye holes and she's got a leather, um, leather, leather armor that she's wearing. Okay. She's also got a scourge, and right. she sort of snaps it and is ordering two combatants to basically hurl themselves at each other um, and tells them to basically to put their backs into it. Um, stop, okay. stop, stop being goofballs and put on a real fight. The Xanathar wants a good show. The two creatures that are fighting in the pit are both big. One is a minotaur. Okay. The other is a hippo man. A hippo man? Oh, no! Yes. A giant, <laughs> a giant burly hippo man. They're about the same size. And Where did he get there? They're, they're having at it. And uh, the hippo man says, Come on, then, bring it! <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what you've got, you horned fiend. Fisticuffs. <laughs> yes, time for fisticuffs! Oh, my God! And they're, they're basically punching each other's lights out. All right. And none of them noticed me. That's right. I mean, I You see... hit like a puny school child. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see no reason to interrupt. OK. I'm just going to keep on keeping on. Sounds good. Uh, make a stealth check. Oh, come on. <laughs> 18. OK. Uh, you all, as you're making your way stealthily, and they're not paying much attention to you, you also see what appears to be one of those scrying sensors coming down from the ceiling. Uh, oh. But it doesn't notice you either as you glide silently through the shadows of the room to the other exit. Oh. I feel like if I set that off, it might help cover my escape more. Mm -hmm. 
and also DF might die. So it's it's win win. <laughs> but then these guys might notice me. So no, I'm just gonna I'm gonna. Okay, you refrain. There's I'm a... gonna, you're welcome. <laughs> remember this if I ever get to come back. Assuming I don't die on my. Yep. Way. Just remember that fourth wall knowledge. No problem. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh yeah, Paulton by now is taken out of. A- a paper he keeps on his person just wrote cozen <laughs> <laughs> all right and uh, so you slip out uh, leaving the minotaur and the gif uh, to their fisticuffs yeah groovy done and done the beholder takes to the air once more mm. um focuses its eye stalks at uh, the tank with the fish in it and makes a desperate maneuver. Um, I would like Diath and Strix to make a strength saving throw as he tries to telekinesis the tank out of your grasp. We're not good at that. (laughs) (laughs) Collectively? He's trying to to, uh, individually. Each of you gets to make a dexterity saving throw. Or sorry, strength, oh strength, strength saving throw. Damn, damn. To try to hold onto the tank that the beholder is trying to rip from your clutches. I'm just gonna not look. Oh, that's my bad. I got 15. I got an 11. He rips the tank from your grasp. Can and, I? And floats it toward him. Now, can you? Would can that I... have been counterspellable? I don't think so. Not from an eye beam. No. It's not cool. an eye stop. Those are great. <laughs> good, good Ugh. features. Well balanced. Thanks. Great. Um. Can I just yell? We poisoned him. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, Dieth will just say loudly enough so that both Strix and the Xanathar can hear it. I'll just say, well, he didn't listen. Strix, fireball it. And poison, okay. <laughs> it's, when you say that, it, it's still the beholder's turn. Yeah. Uh, and I can I can hellish rebuke. It hasn't attacked you yet. God damn it, why do I always get that wrong? <laughs> uh, it is going to then use another eye ray on you, since you were, car- since you were good enough to share your plan. Uh, he'll target Strix. Fine, just kill me at this point. Make a <laughs> make a wisdom saving throw, Strix. Well, cool. just kill me. You know that might I'd probably be happier in hell. Oh, that's a nine. Okay, you are struck by the fear ray and must, on your turn, uh, get as far away from the Xanathar as possible. I mean, if if Evelyn is technically. <laughs> <scared>. <laughs> No. <laughs> Wouldn't the aura still work? Nope, I'm sorry. Okay. Nice just, try, though. Okay. Yeah, nice try. Uh, okay. And, uh... Well, it'll be, it's even more sad because she just, like, looks around and looks super scared, and like, when Dia yeah. first met her. And the Xanathar, yeah, will, the Xanathar will then fix one of its eye stalks on you, Paulton. Uh, it's used up its, its eye ray ability for the time being. Uh, but it mm-hmm. looks at you with one of these eye stalks and then just says to you, ah, can't, can't spell that. Can you, you little shit? <laughs> <laughs> he just looks back at him. I've seen your character sheet. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> All right. Damn. And then uh, it That's is... like saying I've seen you in the shower. <laughs> yeah, right? He looks back at he looks back at the Xanathar, he's just like I'm gonna rip each of your eye stocks off and fucking sell them as sex toys, buddy. <laughs> oh, damn. I don't have a character sheet. I have a stat block. It's the biggest stat block. <laughs> <laughs> Related wizards, if you're listening, I got a great idea for a new product line. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right, and then um, it is the Xanathar's minions' turn, and they are going to try to grapple and apprehend you, Paulton. So um, let's see. The bugbears um, just dogpile on you, basically. Um, 
Make a strength, athletics, or a dexterity acrobatics check. Ooh, let's go with... Uh, man, I have to choose between the plus two and the plus 12. I think we're going to go acrobatics. Yeah, that is a dirty 20. Okay. Um, one of them tries to get his, his mitts on you, but really can't. Um, then uh, the goblins, they just sort of keep their distance. They don't interfere in the battle until the Xanathar commands them to, and he hasn't done so yet. The Zentarim guy... Um, who's still alive. Oh, boy. He's kind of a prick. Uh, he is going to try to just attack you. Okay. Um, since, you're, since he has allies all around you, he's better at this. Because he's an assassin. Oh, good for him. Yeah. So... Do, do, do. He makes two short sword attacks, missing with one, but rolling uh, 22 to hit with the other one. That attack uh, is going to do uh, seven points of piercing damage, mm -hmm. plus uh, 14 points of sneak attack damage. Plus, twenty-four points of poison damage. So twenty-four and fourteen is thirty-eight, and seven is forty-five points of damage total. Okay, so with that, something I didn't realize I had forever now, mm -hmm. I'm going to use my reaction and okay. use uh, cutting words. Okay, and you're still alive, right? You still got yes, Great. absolutely. All right. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So using my bardic in inspiration, it says roll the die and subtract the number from the creature's roll. So what? I'm not sure what it means by the die. It does not specify. It says as a reaction, when a creature mm -hmm. uh, you can see within 60 feet of you makes an attack roll, ability check, or damage roll, you can expend one. You oh wait, so it's probably my bardic inspiration. So yeah. eight. So that'd be eight. D10, so yeah, big fucking difference there. Oh, that is a 10. Oh, hello. Cool. Okay. Uh, what am I looking at here? Bard. Mm -hmm. uh, cutting words. There you go. Mm -hmm. So it's my, uh, yeah. so it's this, yeah, it's the same okay, dive. And that's taken off the attack? Or? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it says off, uh, or is it off the damage? It says makes an uh, attack roll, ability check, or damage roll. Okay. All Does right. Does he actually say cutting words? Cutting like words. You said. Okay. In that case, uh, the attack misses you. Probably, oh. probably stuff like you're not named NPC. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like you're just data that'll be forgotten by next episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so his, his assassinating attack, he's, he's struck to the core by your cutting words, and it throws him off his game and, st oh, and uh, prevents him never getting that raise. from piercing your, your flesh. Good. Yay, good job. Uh, yeah, zero is way better than, what, 40? Hell yeah. Cool. All right, um, so that's the bad guy's turn. Oh, I forgot Amergo, our resident dwarf who thinks he is a minotaur. Uh, he is going to come at you, too, um, and I guess he's huh. going to swing twice with his great axe, because, you know, heck. Oh, okay, so he rolled a 26 on the first attack, which will do... Wait, who's this on? This is on you, Paul. Oh, okay. He's, he's, you, you attack the Beholder, so he's got to put on a show here and attack you back. This, uh, this uh, horned, helmed dwarf. That will cool. be uh, 16 points of slashing damage plus 7 points of extra slashing damage, or because he's got lots of hit points. So that will be a total of 23 points of slashing damage from the first swing. Cool. From the second, from the second swing, um, he actually crit you with a nat 20, and you take unless. unless. I cutting words. Can I reaction again? No, because you've used your one reaction for the turn. Cool. 
Well, would have been nice to know I was going to get attacked seven times this turn. Yep. <laughs> so 14, 19, another 26 points of damage. Cool. All right. How you looking? I've looked, I've looked worse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the bad guys are done. And uh, Paulton, it's your turn. You see that the Beholder currently has the fish tank levitated about 15 feet up in the air nearby. And he, he sort of looks at the fish lovingly to make sure that it's okay. Because after Strix said they, they poisoned it, he's duly concerned. I'm going to... Fuck. Cool. So I'm hurting a lot. Um, wow, this is fun. d and is so fun. <laughs> Having a great time right now. Uh, I'm, how far is he from me? Oh, not far. Like tops 10 feet. Cool. How's he looking? Um, so right now, he is, you would say, if not bloodied, very, very close to bloodied. So he's lost about half his hit points. I'm going to tell him, let's see. I'm going to talk to him real quick. I'm going to tell him, I already warned you once. We have your fish. Stand down. I point to the pile of okay. evil and I'm like, fix that. And the fish lives. I have the fish right here. Yeah, just keep. And, he, and I go, you have what you think is the fish. <laughs> he looks at it with all his eye, several of his eye stalks very closely. I'm pretty sure it's the fish. <laughs> Unless it's secretly cozen. <laughs> he says, he the, Zen the Zenithar will turn a couple eyes toward you and say, look, I'm a lot smarter than you, okay? <laughs> I point to Strix is still here, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, but she's like. I point to. He I, says, I point to Strix. I'm seventeen. <laughs> intelligence mm -hmm. fourteen. Which is higher? <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like it's not about me. It's about her. We have an expert polymorpher here. The uh, real he, fish. He, he looks over your shoulder at the panic-induced uh, <laughs> Strix. I'm trying to deceive him. And, so Strix is like pulling on her clothes, like, ah! <laughs> like and <laughs> and looks at her and says, "Intelligence fifteen." I think I'm smart. <laughs> so what is that? Just a no on deception then? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Well. Anything else you'd like to do? Well, that wouldn't have been my action, would it? You're just talking. Okay. And I'm like, all right, Welp. Uh, full fuck it then. Now I'm gonna thunder wave him. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> all right. So Boom. Good. Okay. That's gonna hit the fish. It could. Good. Yeah. Fuck this fish. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you have the option of not hitting the fish, but if you want to hit the fish, you can in the blast. I want to hit the fish the most. Okay, great. <laughs> of course you do. Uh, cool. All right. These uh, adventures are made for people that plan things, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, go ahead. Okay. So, yeah. Ooh. You see the Beholder momentarily close all of his eye stalks like he's, he knows the blast is coming. Mm -hmm. Well, these are good rolls, though, unless I just jinxed it. No, oh, that was good. Oof. Boy. Okay. Uh, so. Cozen, as you were retreating into the depths of uh, the Xanathar's lair, you hear another big boom sound. 39. Oh, ow. Okay. 
Uh, he is definitely well and truly bloodied at this point. And mm -hmm. uh, the fish tank explodes. <laughs> A shower of water follows. The fish goes flying back through the air. The Xanathar took uh, half of that damage and is not blasted back, but um, you see uh, as his, he can take as a reaction on his turn an eye, an eye ray attack after another creature is active. Or sorry, it's another a, one? It, it's a, he can take a legendary action after your turn. Um, oh, cool. Normally he'd send that eye ray after one of you, but after the fish goes flying through the air, he uses the eye ray to try to catch the fish with his telekinesis ray. The fish nat 20 resists it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and he the he fish is like, I'd rather die. <laughs> yeah. um, and he succeeds in catching the fish uh, before it hits the floor. And immediately he goes, oh, no, no, no. We have to get you back into your tank. Uh, uh, oh, oh, no. And, and as my bonus action, mm -hmm. as Chad had pointed out, I'm going to uh, take out the Sun Sword, assuming I still have that because I'm having a hard time keeping track of this timeline. You, I have it, right? You have the, yes, you have the sword hilt. Cool. And it says, uh, Chad says the bonus action can be to activate it. It's more for flair, <laughs> to be fair. Okay, sure. I like so that. I just kind of do it. Just kind of Jedi. <laughs> and he says, I told you. Last chance. This is your last chance, Jabba. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well now, are you going to billow your cloak at the same time? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Crazy billowing of the cloak. And, uh,. He uh, actually, it's not quite his turn yet. But you can see the fear in his eyes as you light your sword and billow your what's, cloak. What, what's left of them? Yes. <laughs> and uh, he says, "When did you get the cloak? It's not on your character sheet. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> That's but cheating." You got an outdated one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and uh, he uh, he looks concerned all of a sudden. Uh, it is uh, now Strix's turn. Strix, you are overcome with fear. Do I get a save on that or no? Nope. Oh, balls. Nice. Cool. Well, I mean, this is a normal feeling for me, so I'm just like, ah! <laughs> Yes, as being a frightened creature. Uh, That's me. Yes. Uh, what you here's what the frightened condition says: You have disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls while the source of your fear is within line of sight, and you can't willingly move closer to the source of your fear. Okay. Um, uh, you can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of your turns. All right. So I am going to try and polymorph the fish again. Okay. I am not going to move closer, but I'm going to try and polymorph the fish again. Okay. And I want to polymorph it into... Oh, something like a butterfly. Okay. Uh, you turned it into something like a butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> and it's still kind of snared in his telekinesis beam, but then he, the Xanathar looks at it and goes, Well... <laughs> Stop doing that. <laughs> and the Strix is going to try Sildar and... doesn't like it. And Strix is going to yell, how do you know if it was him all along? I can oh, tell. I'm very, I'm very afraid. <laughs> all right. Um, oh, I get to save. I get to roll my save. Yes, you do. That's an 11. Okay. You, the fear has still taken hold. Okay, well. Yeah. Mm. What do you do? I don't know, man. You see Paulton standing over uh, Broken Evelyn with his uh, laser sword out and his cloak billowing dramatically. Oh, man, that's even cooler. The rubble of Evelyn at his feet. Oh. I, uh, cool isn't yeah, the cool. word I would use yeah. for that. Yeah, that's so rad. Cool for fan art. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Can't you see it? Wink. This Paulton is gonna says. This is going to make me sad. Um, okay. So to get everything caught up, Silger is now a butterfly. Yes. Flying in place. Yes. 
because it's <laughs> still under like the telekinesis. This is a yes. butterfly for Jared. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. Yes. <laughs> There are several bugbears and goblins still alive, um, but not acting at the moment. There's also a, the dwarf with the horned helm that's been uh, attacking Paulton and mauling him with his great axe. Oh, that guy's still there? Oh, yes. He is an <laughs> ever-present threat to Paulton's existence. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have fireballed everyone, but I just, uh, I just feel like we're going to perish. And there's also a Zent assassin who's threatening Paulton. Yeah, great. Um, so yeah, that's like, butterfly glass is shattered. Uh, Paulton's pissed. Mm -hmm. So, when something is in a telekinesis ray, uh, is it like a is it basically like a a, a strength contest to try to like pull yeah. something out of a ray? Basically, or, yeah, okay, yeah. got it. All right, um, then I want to get us out of here. Uh, Dieth is also feeling just very unnerved right now because with the fear cast on Strix, he's mm -hmm. seeing her in ways that he hasn't seen in years right. now. Yes. It's just... And he also knows she won't go any closer to the Beholder than she is now. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I... Just kill him! <laughs> but you've got dudes on you! Paulton, Paulton just doesn't care. Like, he's getting mauled by, like, everything around him, but his eyes are just, like, set on Xanathar. It's like, just fucking kill this thing. Um, how hard is it to attack a butterfly? Not terribly hard. Okay. Um... I'm, I don't know why I did that. Scared Strix is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Holy Christ, this is terrible and I hate it. Um, I don't know how to, I, I, don't, I can't really sneak attack Xanathar as I don't have an ally within five feet. So it would just be a, a pitiful death attack. So I wouldn't really do much. Right. So attacking yes. him is not a good idea. So, I guess what I'd like to do is, um, yeah, I'm gonna try to sneak attack the assassin who tried to attack, tried to attack Paulton. Okay. And ideally one shot it. Right. That just happens, right? <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Ah? Go okay. For okay. It. okay. Uh, it's a pretty good attack, though. He has taken 21. damage from Paulton's Thunder Wave. First Thunder Wave. Oh, okay. That, that helps. All right, so 21 just on him. That hits. All right, let me get all my D6s. Because I'm, I'm, I'm mostly just trying to get this guy out of the way. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Now that's too many ones. Uh, so Diaz leaps up, has at this guy. And this guy is sort of a kind of a grimy, shady, dark figure with betraggled black hair and a scruffy black beard. <clears throat> yeah, so basically I walk up and like just got by the shoulders, like blade right into his back for 30. 30 points? Yes. Holy shit. Okay. Um, He's still alive. But, but greatly wounded. Damn it. And then uh, with that, uh, basically pull gutter out and then move past him and bring the bloody gutter up next to that butterfly. Okay. And just be like, I will you hold the rip dripping. its little goddamn rings, wings off. <laughs> <laughs> now you know that the Xanathar can easily just move the butterfly out of your grasp given a chance. Right, which is, but with the sword there, there's that threat of me just being like, <laughs> true. I'm just saying, just, just trying, just trying to. All right, so you threaten the yeah. butterfly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're, just, we're, <laughs> we're past threats. Just do it. The Xanathar already attacked. The the Xanathar huh? will then use another legendary action to use an eye ray at the end of your turn. Deal. All right, bye, and, fam. 
I need you to make a wisdom so <laughs> wisdom saving throw. Let me check something just very quickly here. Oh, you mean uh, dexterity? Did you mean dexterity? No, he's not going to attack you with anything dexterity related. Can we just leave? <laughs> Today's been going really bad. <laughs> I just want to go home. Strix yells as she stares at a wall. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> no, that's that won't exactly don't do what he needs. So, <gasps> DF, make a Constitution saving throw. No. No, oh, stop looking at my character sheet. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Wisdom was slightly better. <laughs> I know. <laughs> This is why the Xanathar are so dangerous. Uh, this is important. Um, I would like to use human determination for advantage. <laughs> Good call. If that I was not. We're all like, oh yeah, Sam, we're you're gonna die within the first ten minutes. <laughs> we're all dead. <laughs> the codes in the back. Oh, that's way better. Uh, you said constitution, right? Yes, please. All right, 19. Okay, you resist his paralyzing ray. <sighs> You're still able to move your limbs despite uh, his attempts to freeze you in place. Yep. Uh, and he will just move the fish out of your reach. And, it's fine. Uh, he'll actually move himself out of your reach as well. He will fly up near the ceiling, so he's about 20 feet off the floor. Out of Paulton's reach. I can, I can still hit that butterfly. Just okay, it. and uh, that brings us to Kozen, who is foot loose and fancy free. <laughs> Kozen, are you continuing your merry trek toward yeah, no, Skullport? Am, uh... All right. Everyone yeah. in chat is saying that Dieth gets an opportunity attack if he flies away. He was never actually adjacent to the Beholder. But the butterfly. <laughs> so, I will let I will actually allow you to make a, an opportunity attack against the butterfly, DF. If I choose to do so. If you choose to do so. <laughs> do, it. do it. Do it. Take it with you. Evelyn's watching from the movie theater next to Arabelle popping popcorn. Oh, no! <laughs> no! <laughs> no! <laughs> Damn it! No, I'm not attacking it. Okay. Uh, then he'll move safely away with Silgar. Arabelle and Evelyn look at each other like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cozen, you'll eventually emerge uh, up through the basement of a place called the Guts and Garters Inn, a uh, ramshackle hole of an inn, basically in the heart of Skullport. And, and uh, then yeah. I inherit the inn from my late uncle. <laughs> and it begins our spin-off series. Uh, called, In trouble. Yeah. Called The Cozen Girls. Oh, no. About uh, me and three sassy retirees who run a hotel. No, I'm... <laughs> I'm, 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 way, I'm way the fuck out. You guys have got this. This is fine. All right. And uh, so now we are back to the Beholder's regular turn. Mm-hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Well, well, what to do? He's got. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. Uh, Paulton, make a yep. dexterity saving throw. Okay. Uh, 21. Okay. You are, you dodge that disintegration ray. Oh. Okay. I know that one. <laughs> it leaves a hole in the, in the floor. Uh, where you were, where you leapt out of the way from. Can Paulton have done one of those cool, like, things? Absolutely. And nah. then, uh, Dieth, you're targeted by a black crackling ray. Make a constitution saving throw. Okay. Oops. Uh, 20. All right. 30, 20. You take half damage, unless you oh. have. <clears throat> Evasion? Evasion. I take none! You take none. <laughs> he strafes the ground with Enervation Ray and misses you, and you see Ooh, I thought you were smart, Xanathar. 
<laughs> Is that what Dia says? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can't hit this. Amerigo, kill them. Fuck. Uh, the dwarf will have at Paulton. Um, actually, Paulton, have you gone since the dwarf last attacked you? No, right? Mm, I don't yeah. think. Yeah, so it's your turn. Oh, cool. All right. Um... You are being accosted, uh, Paulton, by the horned dwarf. The uh, the Zent assassin has turned his focus toward Dieth. Okay, how far is the dwarf from me? He's right next to you. Okay, cool. So, um, and how far up is? Twenty feet. The other. Cool. Let's see. Wave fast. We down from. Mm-hmm. Let's do Is there anything I could step on to like go up five feet? Um up five feet. Yeah, yeah there, there, uh, there's some uh, there's some like corpses slumped around that you could probably leap up on. You Would could that assemble Evelyn into a little rubble pile? You could do that. And leap off her. Uh, Paulton says to Sam, he's like, it's Evelyn. Like, how many episodes have you been now? <laughs> I only show up once a year. <laughs> <laughs> um, Would Dieth be able to, like, put his hands together to yeah. hoist them up real You fast? could do that. You so could basically, leap, leap off I'd of be... Okay, I just want to make sure I could get within five feet of the Xanathar and, again, thunder wave him. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, you could leap uh, off of Dieth and then thunder wave him in the air. Okay, cool. I would like to do that. All right. Dude, so he's got like the cloak of billowing, the sun sword drawn, and he like walks up in <laughs> slow mo onto Dia's yeah. hands. Dia throws him into the Just, air and he goes, yeah. boom, boom. Amazing. Cool. So that is a, again, that's a 17 okay. state for him. Yep. Uh, you'll also get the fish or butterfly, as it were, um, if you so choose, which you do. Yep. And then I very much go shoot. ahead and roll your damage. The Xanathar oh. failed its saving throw. Whoop! All right. Big money. Okay. Uh, oh, that one wasn't it. And then how many am I doing now? It is... Oh, okay. I get one more. Sweet. Okay. That's actually good. Okay. So... Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight points of damage. Wow. Okay. All right. Uh, Xanathar is looking more hurt. Uh, Silgar butterfly is sort of obliterated. Turns from a butterfly into a <laughs> fish, and then is obliterated as a fish, uh, and nothing left remains. And you just hear this audible gasp. <laughs> Paulton superhero lands with the <laughs> cape billowing and the sword out. He just does a slow look up and he goes, "Yeah, it's your last warning." You are so dead. <laughs> <laughs> you first, but I'll see you there. All right. Uh, next up is Strix. All right. As soon as I see the butterfly fish get obliterated, I'm I, yeah. I'm just like, "Well, all right." Fireball! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just like res, like resigning. Boom. I also am casting it at fifth level. Okay. Whoop. And I already rolled, and it was forty six. Shit, man! All right, uh, the Xanathar failed. All right, I guess we're doing this. <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, uh, all right. We don't have our bargaining chip anymore. <laughs> the assassin. Uh, succeeded and takes no damage. Oh, what an asshole. Because he, huh. he too has evasion. Uh, the cool. dwarf rolled a natural one and takes it all. And all of the bugbears and goblins are incinerated. So uh, how much damage was that again? 50, 40, 46? Was it 46, yeah. Thank you. Ow. The Xanathar looks extremely hurt. Uh, is smoldering up there, screaming at the top of his lungs, Silgar! <laughs> God. And it is. I also like to imagine that fire is erupting from the sewers again. 
<laughs> it, is. it is, yes. Uh, DF. Church um, is like, actually, stab him! You, the assassin, <coughs> you, you've attacked since the assassin's gone, so um, it's actually the assassin's turn. Yeah, I think the assassin's got uh, a turn. He disengages and flees out bitch. through the double doors, uh, taking off, <laughs> uh, running. Like, like the bitch he is. Yep, yeah, running, <laughs> running for the escape hatch. He disappears. Uh, leaving you with the Beholder and Amerigo the Dwarf. Amerigo the Dwarf, even though he took the full brunt of that fireball, looks like he's got a shit ton of hit, more, hit points left. Um, Great. He, he, re, he just sort of readjusts his, his horned helmet, goes after... Oh, who's the most dangerous? Paulton, mm -hmm. at the moment. Uh, he'll go after you. Uh, he rolls on the die a 25 to hit, which will... Uh, Paulton, yeah. you take uh, you take thirty five points of slashing damage. Cool. I'm gonna cutting words again. Okay. Oh, also unrelated. I did my fear save and got a nineteen. Great. Thank you. You're Sorry. no longer you're no longer afraid. Yay. Uh, how much damage was it? Uh, well, this is against the attack roll, right? No, it's against the damage. Oh, the roll. damage. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be uh, thirty five. Okay, minus seven. So that's. 28, oh, that saved me. Okay. Whew. His Paul second attack. Blocked. Okay, well, cool. <laughs> Is a miss with a 12. <gasps> okay. Um, the Beholder is going to go after DF. Oh, By the way, wait. Halton is literally like covered in blood. Okay. <laughs> Actually, the Beholder has a legendary action he can use after Amergo's turn. He's going to use it right now. But cool. he doesn't have to. He does. He really, <laughs> really does. Strix is just yelling, like, attack me! I don't care! Uh, I yeah. don't want to be alone for 50 years again. Please just kill me. It'd be easier. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, and uh, he says, <laughs> if it makes DF's life miserable, then I'm all for it. And Wait, Strix, what? he will turn a ray on you, Strix. Make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, that's not what I wanted. <clears throat> a purple beam lances down the hallway at the tiefling. Oh, that's a 17. Oh, wait, sorry. 17, yeah. Okay. You get out of the way. Oh. <laughs> and the he death. Fucked up. He, he rolls his death ray at you, and it missed. Ooh, ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I pee myself a little. <laughs> I'm about yeah. to. <laughs> All right. DF? Yes. Your the moment that Ray goes after Strix and she dodges out of the way, DF pulls out Moon Splinter. Misty steps behind Xanathar and stabs him. <gasps> Whoa. Go ahead. Make your attack. Is that, would you consider that with advantage or is a normal attack? What do you think? Advantage. Great. He is totally surprised. Even though it was on my character sheet. <laughs> It was new, though. Yeah. 18. Hit. That's exactly what you need. Oh. <laughs> That's good, because the other die was a two. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's only one one in here, so looking good. Oh, also, when he attacked me, can I hellish rebuke him? Uh, that is a saving throw, not an attack. No! <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll keep asking. Yeah, please do. None That's 39. Things. You kill <gasps> the Beholder. <gasps> and it falls. I want, I want his eye patch to like have a sword come out of it. <laughs> okay. Well, that would, that, would, that would be a hell of a shot. But yeah, it's, uh, your, your blade just sort of <laughs> shoots out. Yeah, like the out eye my patch. hole. Yeah, and then back to your hand. Like my whole hand's in there. And then like when I feel his body go limp, it's yeah. like lifting his sword and just like dropping it to the ground like a like something stuck to your hand just yes <laughs> it just hits the ground with a splat and lands there dead all of its eye stalks fall limp to its sides and at that point in time amerigo just clutches drops his axe clutches his helmet goes no <laughs> <gasps> i've done it i'm the xanathar now <laughs> uh the the dwarf looks at you and takes off his helmet and kneels before you. What? You are Xanathar now. Paul, he's, not, he's, not, he's not smart. 
Paulton drops to his knees and just goes, you did it. <laughs> you finally became the Hokage. <laughs> <laughs> and you ruined it. <laughs> can, can Strix run up to Evelyn and try to use her mending cantrip on her? <laughs> technically, so, technically. One piece at a time. Uh-huh. Uh, there are so many pieces of Evelyn that you would have to pieces use mul- use up, have to use multiple spells to sort of bring each piece individually That's okay. Together. It's okay. It'll work. That's okay. That's just, she's, she's pushing it out. I'm like, that's okay. Mending. Mending. You that's okay. Fi- you sort of, well, at first, it's a jigsaw puzzle because you're like, okay, th- you know, you got to put <laughs> yeah. the right pieces in place. Um, but does it work? You grab one piece that looks like it attaches to another piece. You cast the spell, and those two pieces do fuse together. <gasps> it works. So this will take a while, but it'll work. Well, I mean, Xanathar's dead, so you guys Wrong. loot the place. Xanathar's dead. Long live Xanathar. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. I'm Not sorry. Not my Xanathar. Why, why don't you guys loot the place while I put Evelyn back together? Uh, I actually will go up to, um, uh, what was the dwarf's name? I'm sorry. Amerigo. 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 Uh, and just be like, you will go to the treasure hall to immediately fetch us the true resurrection scroll. No, no, we're fine. We don't need that. It's fine. Once I put her together, all we need is to take her to the temple, get stone to flesh, then she's back to flesh, and no. I don't think she's dead yet. Strix, trust me on this one. Go to the hold and find us the, find, find us the most valuable looking scroll there. Tell no one of your mission or what has happened here. Now go. Oh, 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 oh. Yes, sir. I trust you with this, Amerigo. <laughs> You're our most trusted lieutenant. He puts his helm on and stomps off down a passageway. Great, he's out of here. Mending, 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 mending. Is this her head? I think this is her eye. Is this can her I like, eye? Can I like try to like hold it up? Help, like put pieces together. <laughs> she holds yeah. it up to Paulton and she's okay. like, "Does this look like Evelyn's eyeball?" Yeah, that looks. Make, that, that's uh, right. One of you can assist the other in an intelligence check to sort of try to piece Evelyn together properly. <laughs> I'll okay, gonna help end since so well. since she's mending. Oh, that's not bad. I got a sixteen. Okay, yeah, let's go with that. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, you're you're piecing her together. It's just going to take a tremendous amount of time and patience to get it right. Strix, can you get us out of here? Uh, do you want to sweep up all the pieces of Evelyn first, or yeah, do you want to can put you... her together first? Well, whatever it is it takes to make sure that she comes with us. I will do that, but why don't you go loot everything in here? There's, no, like, stuff. No, while you're doing that, I'll be right back. You love stuff. I no. mean, treasure chest stuff, you know, whatever's in those. I, are there snacks in those? I don't know. And she's like pushing the pieces together. It's not stuff that I love. Snacks. Look, I'll be back. All right, uh, uh, Dia, where are you going? I'm returning back to that fishbowl where I found there was a treasure chest inside. <laughs> oh my God. As you make your way <laughs> back, door. as you make your way back there, you see that there is a door open that wasn't open before, and a booming voice issues from it and says, "This isn't a pillow fight. <laughs> Hit me like you meant it." Oh, God damn it. <laughs> I, I know where that's coming from. Yeah, it's coming from that doorway. Okay. Well, I'm pretty sure Strix can get him out too. Oh, oh, God. Yep, all right. Yep, we'll get him too in just a moment. I want that treasure chest. You go back to the fishbowl. And then... Uh, I, I, just, I just shatter open that bowl. I don't care at this point. So you're going to just like... I, I pick up the step stool or ladder and just <laughs> let all the water <laughs> pull out. How big is this chest, by the way? <laughs> you bash this awkward ladder up against the wall, the glass wall of the fishbowl and realize the, the glass wall is stronger than it looks. Well, damn. Also full of water. They don't care about the water part. Yeah, but well, yeah, makes it I guess break. all the stuff inside is probably wet. Okay, so it's like, I can breathe underwater. What do you mean? Uh, well, how, how big was the chest? Was it like it's a large? Normal, it's or? a normal sized chest. Okay, not like a little lockbox or anything. No. Okay, well, dang. Um. <laughs> I'm going to take my rope, swim in there, tie it around the treasure chest, get out of the bubble, and then pull the chest right out. Okay. So you <laughs> climb up on the ladder. 
You dive yeah. into the chest with the rope. You tie the rope around the chest handles, yeah. and then you flip, f come back out, and then once outside on the ladder, Just, you rip yeah. the. You're able to pull the entire chest up and out. It's heavy work, but you're able to do it. Okay, good. Uh, and now and then it's I'm on gonna... top of the ladder with you, dripping wet. Great. I'm going to give this a quick once over and make sure it's, it's safe and good and not not trapped or anything. Or make a perception check for traps. Not, nothing about it is like I just love alive. I'm reading, chat. I'm reading chat and they're like, I can't believe they lived. I'm like, thanks guys. Thanks. <laughs> I mean, we can't believe we lived. I know. You said perception. Perception for traps. All right, reliable, reliable talent twenty one. Okay. You don't believe the chest is trapped. Okay. It's it's not like a mimic or some shit either. No. Uh, Hasn't it? All right. Anything. All right. I'm going I'm to open, open this bitch up. All right. You crack open the chest or make a de dexterity check to open with your lock picks. Oh, since God, you don't yes. Have the key. Mm hmm. You got it, Chris. Oh, 28. Wait. I'm sorry, 32. 32. Oh, God. <laughs> you pop it open easily. And inside, you can see it's stuffed full of precious gemstones at first glance. It looks like also something may have rested on top of the gemstones at one point. There's an indentation there, but the, whatever object it was is missing. Oh, weird. Uh, you sort of you sort of dig around. Yeah. Maybe you look for secret compartments. Maybe. Yeah, I also want to collect up as many gems as possible. You can. You can see there's at least 30 of these gems, and based on your instant appraisal, you think they might be worth about 100 gold each. So this is like a 3,000 gold piece trove you've just found. Okay, well, that's a small drop in the bucket. What? Um, you also see that uh, uh, there is a secret compartment. Uh, you're able to uh, pop open the back of the chest and can see inside there is uh, what appears to be a wand and a scroll tube. Perfect. Uh, I'm, good. Treats for the others. I'm going to take those two. Okay. And then, <clears throat> yeah, after getting all that collected up, uh, I'm going to retreat back to Strix and Paulton as fast as possible. Okay. Uh, you still hear a sort of fighting coming from down that staircase. Yeah, I want to get to that. That's I basically say to get back to them. Uh, yeah, Seth's like, the trap door. Yes, I'm going to trip for. <laughs> and Why? As soon as I get back to them, and I like assess how much they put Evelyn back together, uh, and then I say, "Guys, Warrington Munt's here, and we have to save him too." Oh. Paulton's still just trying to like put pieces together. He's like, "Yeah, that 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 looks like that matches." Okay, yeah. that's good. Strix notices <laughs> that she put she put both of her ears on backwards, and she's like, "Shit!" And she just like scrapes one off and switches them. <laughs> They're pretty tied up right at the moment, DF. They seem all wholly interested in Evelyn. It's like it's it's not actually her, it's just a puzzle that like, you know, unlocks her. Like that's <laughs> why she's not oh. dead, dead, dead again. Like you just gotta All right, just think. just keep working on it. I'll go back for Warrington. Oh yeah, God. who not, who the whatever that is. Okay, so that's a I think figure. that's her nose. I thought it was a, f okay, well, you know what? It could be either or. Let's just It put, might be a thumb. Okay, how about we set it aside and see if we find a nose? <laughs> oh. I'm going to start marking them with numbers. I take okay. my quill out idea. and we'll start like writing numbers. That's good, okay. So before I actually go back for a Warrington, yeah. I'm going to take I'm going to take the corpse of the Xanathar with me. That's huge. I mean, I mean okay, it's, never like, mind it's then. like a six foot diameter <laughs> mass of flesh. Oh. Can, can we watch him struggle for a little bit? The big beholder. You like grab it by the eye stock and you just rip an eye stock off. It's like, what? No! Uh, like, hey, uh, can you save a few of those? I have a, I have a business idea. <laughs> yeah, 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 take as many as you want. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going, I'm going for what I heard. Goddamn Warrington. You run down a staircase and into an arena, and on the blood-soaked sand, you see lying, splayed out, spread eagle, staring up at the ceiling, an unconscious minotaur. And standing over the minotaur, cracking his knuckles, is Warrington <laughs> Munt. And he, uh, and he's like, I'm the crowd goes wild. <laughs> there's, there's no one watching. It's just them fighting. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. The fight's over at this oh. point. There is a halfling um, who uh, is uh, there, um, standing with a hood on, um, and Warrington shoots a glance over to you. 
Okay, how how easily can I get him out of this pit? If I like drop a, a rope from him, would he be able to climb out? He could probably just climb out. Oh. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's no one else here, and it's just a halfling. Yeah. Uh, without saying anything, Dieth will just be like, he just kind of whisper and then like give like that come with me motion. Oh, right then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ding dong, good. We'll make a secret escape, and none of them shall know. <laughs> He says, I, you don't want to go around the tune, do you, Ding Dong? Uh, yes. Uh, that was a really good Warrington, Jared. <laughs> yeah, it was a very, very, very good Warrington. Uh, and uh, the halfling sort of intercedes, and he just sort of conks her on the head, and she falls over. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Think. And uh, he says, we can't. <laughs> <laughs> we can't leave yet. What do you mean we can't leave yet? Not where there's a trove of smoke powder. Oh. Uh. Right. Right. I heard there's a sizable trove down here. <sighs> okay. Is that something you feel you can retrieve on your own and then meet back up with us? Well, my direction sense isn't what it used to be. This place is quite a maze. What? What indeed? And that's where we'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, Anna, I'm so oh. sorry you were uh, stone for. It's okay. Much of that. I have mending now. Yes. Okay, you know. Yeah. Th- Evelyn, but, is, yes. Evelyn's resilient. It's true. She's, she's used to things being a little rocky. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't rubble her the wrong way. Oh no. Look, she had like a solid hour 40 minutes to think of oh. these, so let her have it. <laughs> right, yes. Uh, we deserve it. Oh. I'm sorry if I'm piling it on. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> oh dear. We laugh because we cry. Um so that's, that's it for today's show. Uh, we'll be back next week with more Waffle, Dr- Waffle Crew hijinks and undoubtedly the return of evil in some way, shape, or form. Probably intact. And, uh, but before we break off, there are announcements, and I would like to say thank you again, Sam Sykes, not only Yay. for joining us today, but also for surviving to another day. Again! You are, yeah. Yeah. You are a canny opponent, sir. I thought this plan went really well. <laughs> <laughs> Super cool that you're still alive. That was so fucking I, good. I so it was going to go much worse. But. Look forward to playing with you in a year again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll see you guys next year. Uh, yeah. Yes. Dieth will be more exasperated by then. I'm hoping that the Zentrum agent that escaped can join me in my uh, spinoff. Oh yeah, he, and, he didn't and, go. He didn't go the way you went. So. Oh, um, I was I was hoping he would be like yeah. the charismatic yeah. bartender of the inn. Got that it. I'm yes. on. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, announcements. Oh, no, it was a pleasure. Uh, announcements starting with our guest, Sam. Do you have anything you want to share with the greater community? Um, yeah, just, you know, if you enjoyed uh, Cozen and his antics today, uh, you would enjoy my books, uh, which you can find at samsykes.com. And the first one is The City Stained Red, which is basically Dungeons and Dragons, yep. but for assholes. <laughs> for cousins for cousins so if you like cousin by all means go buy my book and that is the end that of that is my the end of the announcements <laughs> i'll make another one in a year all right anything else uh, I'm going back out on tour next month for the continuation of the Paid and Exposure Tour. If you want to come to a concert, we're going to the East Coast. We're going to New Jersey, Boston, Philly, D.C., Atlanta, and Orlando. Tickets are at NateWantsToBattle.com. Come hang out at a show. Yay. And I will be at uh, Coachella on the 22nd of September, a polo charity event where you can meet me and First Officer Feathers. <laughs> Nice. In San Francisco. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Uh, it will be a lovely event with uh, food and it'll be exciting. And I'll link it in the chat if you want to come when to Coachella. It's the 22nd of September. It's um, here in San Francisco. It is. Yes, I can I'll come be there. First Officer Feathers. You can come yep. meet First Officer Feathers at Coachella in, in San Francisco, California. 
So uh, he is extremely vicious. So please, (laughs) please do not, do not sue me. I'm terrified. (laughs) He bit me in the eye the other day, but uh, you know, he can't do that much to Chris is breaking. (laughs) But please come say hello, buy tickets to Coachella to support Palomacy Pigeon and Dove Rescue. Thank you. That is all. All right. I'm going to be on Twitch Weekly on Friday. I'm on Twitch Weekly almost every Friday, but if you like to hear about cool things that are happening on Twitch or coming up that you want to watch, uh, you can tune in at 1 p.m. on twitch.tv slash twitch on Fridays. And also, we haven't released lots of details, but we did say that the entire Waffle Crew will be up to something at TwitchCon. Yes. And I will go so far as to say it's something big. So if you're thinking about going to TwitchCon and you want to uh, know whether you'll get your D&D fix there, and that's your determining factor, I will say you should mm-hmm. go ahead and get those tickets at TwitchCon.com. Yep. Don't forget the Dice Camera Action subreddit. Red.com slash R slash Dice Camera Action for all kinds of fan art, fan fictions, uh, hypotheticals, and discussions. I'll spam that link. Uh, In addition to that, don't forget that as was announced uh, last week, now fan arts and things can finally be integrated into the Dice Camera Action shows, which means if you uh, make any kind of fan art, hashtag it with Waffle Crew, hashtag fan art, uh, you may see that pop up during the streams. Uh, in the show, which is also super cool. And don't forget the entire Dice Camera Action crew plus Chris Perkins is coming as a uh, DLC pack of characters for the enhanced editions of Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate 2, Neverwinter Nights, and Icewind Dale. Milo, too. And Milo. That's right. Milo. Where you can play as us with our portraits and our voices. Then if there are no more announcements, uh, we will call it for this week. We'll be back next week, uh, during which we might get a glimpse of what Diath Crime Lord feels like. (laughs) (laughs) until then take care of each other and take care of yourselves and we'll see you then bye bye